Hi, today we are going to explore the Basilica of Our Lady of the Mount or the Mount Mary Church. What makes this church special is the reverence people have for the shrine from all over the world and across all faiths and Christian denominations. In addition to the millions of prayers that are made and answered every day, the church has some of the most beautiful murals and a history that is deeply intertwined with the formation of Bandra or Vandra as it was originally known. Its popularity among various faiths is as old as the foundation and building of this church. I have been visiting this church all my life, praying for myself and others in happiness and when troubles come our way. While our mother listens to our prayers, no matter where we make them, I have always had this childhood belief that when I pray to our mother at this basilica and light a candle, Mother Mary will definitely hear it and pray for me. The popularity of the Mount Mary Church, the effort people both old and young, abled and disabled, sick and healthy make to visit the church, especially on feast days, and the crowd you see no matter what time you visit the church, only proves that our mother is praying for all who visit and are granting all their requests. The popularity and devotion among the millions of people that throng to this basilica is due to the prayers that have been heard and answered over the past 500 years. Christianity in Bandra can be traced back to Vasco da Gama who came to India in 1498. The missionaries that accompanied them saw the land fertile for spreading their work. Using their military power, they captured Vasai and the adjoining areas and built a fort there. Various Christian religious orders settled within the fort and used it as a base to spread their work. Having founded their college of the Holy Name in 1549, they began their apostolic journey. They continued their journey via Thana in 1550, Vihar Lake in 1551 and reaching Bandra around 1568 when Bandra passed into their hands. In 1570, a Jesuit priest constructed a small chapel dedicated to the Virgin Mary with headquarters at St. Anna's Church. This was for private devotion only. A wooden statue of Our Lady depicted as the Mother of God was brought by the Jesuits from Portugal and placed on the main altar. This was the first edifice, which immediately began to attract a large number of devotees. In 1587, the Mount Mary Oratory was placed under the authority of the parish of St. Anna and in 1660, due to the increase of the Christian population, the old parish of Santa Anna was bifurcated and the parish of St. Andrew was created. The Mount Mary Oratory was placed under the authority of the new parish of St. Andrew. In 1640, the Mount Mary Oratory was enlarged into a chapel for increasing the number of devotees as well as for the Portuguese garrison stationed in the fort at Land's End. In 1665, Bombay Island was handed over to the British by the Portuguese. And in 1678, the chapel was enlarged. A Jesuit report referring to the years 1679 to 87 states that the shrine was already famous as a place of pilgrimage frequented by Christians and non-Christians alike. In 1700, Bandra was invaded by a pirate army of musket Arabs who, hoping to find treasure, attempted to ransack the shrine. When disappointed in their expectations, they chopped off the right forearm of the statue, thinking it was of gold. They also intended to set fire to the church when a huge army of bees attacked them so cruelly that they were forced to abandon their evil intentions and leave. As the statue was damaged, it was probably stored in the lumber room and in order not to disappoint the pilgrims, the statue of Our Lady of Navigators from the side altar of St. Andrew's Church was brought to the mount. In 1739, the church of Santa Ana was destroyed by the British with the tacit consent of the Portuguese as they feared it would be used by the Marathas who had conquered Vasai and Salset 
to attack British territory across the creek at Mahim. With the conquest of Versailles, the Portuguese agreed to leave. The last Jesuit vicar of St. Andrews, Father Thomas Villanova, a foreign national left Bandra, and a local priest, Father Paulo Dias, took charge of St. Andrews Parish and the Mount Mary Chapel to take care of the local Catholics. During this period, that is between 1741 and 1761, public devotion at the Mount came to a standstill because of political instability and a lack of priests to look after the shrine. In 1761, Christian worship commenced again and the Mount Mary Chapel was rebuilt for the third. Between 1777 and 1888, a lot of work was done to expand the chapel and make modifications to the edifice and the shrine. With the creation of the causeway linking Mahim to Bandra and the building of the western and central railway stations between Bombay and Virar, including one at Bandra, the number of devotees visiting Our Lady increased. There is a beautiful story behind the building of the causeway. Sir Jamsedji Jiji Boy and his wife Avabai were longing for a daughter and made a written vow to Mother Mary and placed it at her feet in the basilica for a baby girl. When this prayer was fulfilled, Sir Jiji Boy used his influence and funds and built the causeway. Funds were provided under the condition that no toll would be charged from the, pu from the public for using the causeway. In 1895, a major devastating plague broke out in Mumbai. The plague caused havoc on the island and over the next six or seven years, a large number of people died. The people were helpless. The situation was hopeless. They turned to Mount Mary for providing them hope and in the midst of darkness around, the unfailing spontaneous prayer of Bandrites was, Our Lady of the Mount, pray for us. In 1902, with the passing of the plague and the large number of devotees visiting the basilica due to improved travel, it was decided to raise the old church and build the current basilica in its place. The project was taken up by Father Placid Hilary Henrique, vicar of St. Andrews, with the help of Father Elias Braz Dias and Father Pedro Antonio Fernandez. This foundation stone was only laid on 11th of May 1902 by His Grace Archbishop Sebastia of Daman, who lies buried in the shrine. The architect was S.N. Chandavoy and most of the materials were brought by sea and lifted up with the help of bullock carts and donkeys. In 1904, the present church, that is the fourth edifice, was completed and thrown open to pilgrims on the occasion of the Golden Jubilee of the promulgation of the dogma of the Immaculate Conception. Other events that took place after this are as follows. In 1943, Archbishop Thomas Roberts gave the shrine an independent status under a rector of its own in the person of Monsignor Dominic Dissa. He was the first rector of the shrine. In 1950, Monsignor Placidius Edward Fernandez constructed the rectory Marianella. In 1954, inauguration of Oratory of Our Lady of Fatima on 5th December opposite the church. This was the occasion of the Marian year when for the first time the statue of Our Lady of the Mount was taken on a pilgrimage to all the parishes of the city, suburbs and Versailles. On 2nd December, the statue was brought back with its pomp to the shrine, where Cardinal Valerian Gracious warmly welcomed the beloved statue back in its abode. On 5th December, the Cardinal crowned the statue of Our Lady and the Child Jesus with gold crowns. That same day, the church was given the status of a minor basilica by Pope Pius XII. Basilica in the Roman Catholic and Greek Orthodox churches is a canonical title of honor given to church buildings that are distinguished either by their antiquity or by their role as international centers of worship because of their association with a major saint, an important historical event, or in the Orthodox Church, 
a national patriarch. There are major and minor basilicas. Today, there are only four major basilicas in the world. The Basilica of St. Peter, built in 323 AD. The Basilica of St. John, built in 330 AD. The Basilica of St. Paul, built in 380 AD. The Basilica of Mary the Greater, built in 432 AD. There are many minor basilicas and quite a few in India. The list as per Wiki Wikipedia is as follows. This title gives the church certain privileges, principally the right to reserve its high altar for the Pope, a Cardinal or a Patriarch, and special penitential privileges that remove the basilica from local geographical jurisdiction and give it international status. Another major event in this church has been that Pope Paul VI visited in 1964 and Saint Pope John Paul II graced the Basilica during their visit to India.